welcome back to another video. I'm super excited to share with you guys what I'm doing to prep for my implant removal. As you guys know, I am getting my implants removed and I'm just a few weeks away. I really wanted to share with you guys some of the tips that I am going to take on this time around because I've expressed multiple times that I did not take my first time around super serious. I didn't take my surgery serious and I didn't take this stage like pre-surgery. I didn't do any of the things that I'm about to do that I am doing now. So I really just wanted to share that with you and document this moment because I do want to see if it makes a big difference leading um, until my surgery and then also my recovery process. So let's get into what I'm doing to prep for my implant removal. Now, of course you guys can see the boxes behind me. We are moving out, so I've been packing like crazy. I actually have to go back to Home Depot and pick up more boxes and finish the loading up the dishwasher. I have a lot of things to get done in the house, but I really want to get this video out for you guys, so I just decided to film and tell you all about what I'm doing to prep for my surgery. Now, I am excited because I'm dying to get these implants removed. So I am really, really excited about it. I am very nervous, but the most amazing thing about working with My Cosmetic Surgery, if you guys didn't know, I'm going to My Cosmetic Surgery in Miami, and my surgeon is Dr. LaGrasso. He, this is gonna be the second time that we work together. He did my first surgery, and now he's going to do my second. Now, to be quite honest, you can watch the original video of me talking about how my first surgery went. And if you go back to that video, you'll hear more about how I chose working with this particular surgeon. So you can go and kind of recap that. But I'm really excited. He's an amazing surgeon and the team is so supportive. Like the patient coordinator, the surger the surgical coordinator, everybody just kind of leading up to your surgery, but also the main person that you are pretty much like who's assigned to your I don't want to say case because it's not like an attorney situation, but this is like your assigned patient coordinator and she's just super amazing. She's been super supportive. Like I've pushed back my surgery date a few times just to kind of give myself more time, but also to navigate like Luna's situation. And she's honestly been just relieving a lot of anxiety because I'm really stressed out this time period. I'm just so concerned about going under the knife and she just makes me feel so much better and we just laugh it off and she's also she speaks english but she also speaks spanish and it's just like a connection i don't know it's just a vibe and those i really really appreciate them so i've had nothing but really good experiences working with my cosmetic surgery now i want to just quickly talk about what happens when you set your surgery date in my case i am literally a few weeks away so the text message that you receive is going to be pretty lengthy and it's going to be giving you all of the details of the things that you have to get done prior to your surgery. Now, let's say you schedule your surgery date and you're just a few weeks away. They're going to send you a text message and in that text message thread is going to be all of your bef your pre-surgery exams, right? So you're going to have a ton of post-operating exams that you have to do to make sure that you are in a health position to go under the knife. There's going to be a lot of blood work, a lot of exams. In my case, because I have a capsulotomy and it's pretty much like my implant, like my body rejecting the implant, I do have to get an additional exam, like an ultrasound, which isn't included. So in your price points, like in your pricing package. So that I will just do on my own and do it separately. The other exams are included, so they'll give you referrals for those, which is amazing. There are a lot of exams, y'all. It's a lot that has to be done. And like I said, you can just simply go to your surgeon and go to My Cosmetic Surgery and they'll do those exams for you. Keep in mind that if you are traveling to Miami, then you should be there a few days prior to get these exams done so that the surgeon knows exactly what's going on and you're clear for surgery. So you do wanna make sure that you time frame that out if you're going to wait to do your exams. In my case, I did ask for the referral because I wanna kinda jump the gun and get a couple of things done. So whatever I don't get to do out here because I'm coming from New Jersey, I will do over there when I get to Miami because I'm gonna be arriving a few days before. So I get to do that and just to kinda keep in touch with everything. But most importantly is to do my ultrasound because I do have to do that ultrasound because of the implant being rejected. So I definitely wanna make sure I do that. From your post-ops though, from your like pre-surgery 
history exams, there's also going to be like a do's and don'ts kind of situation. You're not supposed to be on any contraceptives, any pills, any medication, anything that you are taking. I highly recommend that you reach out to your patient coordinator and make sure that the surgeon knows what you're taking so they can verify whether or not you're allowed to be on that. Be very honest with them because they need to know what you're consuming. In my case as well is that they also tell you that you should not be drinking, smoking, any kind of nicotine, anything in your body. I was very honest because I, I was always into like cannabis. So for me, I stopped with enough time frame to give myself enough time to get that out of my system, out of my body, sweating a lot and just stopping because the first time around y'all, I did not pay attention to that. And it's not like I smoked like the day before surgery, but I was still partaking in cannabis and I really do feel like that was a big detriment to my recovery and also the scarring process. I feel like it took me so long to heal and my sc my scars and my bruising was just a lot worse. Based on my research, it's definitely because of the smoking. So I highly recommend that you be honest with them. You let them know what your thing is and you just seek their guidance and just stop doing any kind of extracurriculum activities. You know, just be super clean and make sure that you're not doing anything that's going to be a detriment to your surgery because you want a smooth process, but also a smooth healing process so that you can snap back and get back to reality as quickly as possible. The next thing is they do give you some tips on what the day of is going to look like, especially if you just have a few weeks before surgery. They're going to tell you that you have to stay in the vicinity for 48 hours at minimum so that you can just be kind of like monitored and things like that that's their protocol you do want to make sure that someone is of legal age someone of legal age is going to be with you to pick you up after surgery because of course you cannot drive and they are going to tell you what you should do to prep for the day of surgery but they'll send you multiple messages so just you know, follow instructions. But some of those things are like making sure you have no nail polish on your nails, making sure your nails are cut short and that you clean them properly the day of surgery. They'll most likely have you take a shower in um, an antibacterial soap, which is what I had to do the first time around. And that's obviously, of course, to make sure there's like no bacteria inside of your nails because our nails are disgusting, but yeah. So they will give you like the do's and the don'ts and I recommend that you guys take this really serious because speaking of myself, I just didn't really think that it would make a huge difference, but it definitely did. Now those are the things that the surgeon and their team will tell you about. But now I wanna talk about what I'm doing in addition to that, just to make sure that I have the best and smoothest surgery possible. The reality is I won't know if it's gonna make a difference until after surgery, but I truly hope so because I didn't do any of these things before, so I do feel like they're gonna make a big, big difference. I did mention that you do wanna make sure that you're not partaking in any kind of uh, extra activities no drugs, no alcohol, no social drinking, no social smoking. Just keep it really, really clean. The next thing that I'd recommend is eating super duper healthy, y'all. I've been detoxing a lot with like beet juice, carrot juice. I heard carrot juice is absolutely amazing for the skin. And it's also really, really good for like bruising and things like that. I've been drinking carrot juice like no other, okay? If you have like a juicer at home, you can make your own juices. You can look up a ton of different recipes. But this for me, I feel like is is just a key element because you're giving your body all of the nutritional values that it truly needs and you're not giving yourself anything extra. So I'd say eat super clean, no refined sugars, nothing processed, nothing too fried. Um, of course, you wanna like treat yourself, but be mindful that you're not just eating junk food. The first time around, I was bartending at the time and I like worked at a sports bar, y'all. I was eating so bad and so unhealthy. There was no value in the things that I I was eating and I truly feel like that made me feel super sluggish it just didn't make me feel healthy I just didn't feel my best you know so now I am way more like I'm way more mature I'm older now I don't even eat like that anymore the one thing I do love though are sweets I love me some sweets but this time around y'all like keeping it super healthy clean like if I want to have some type of sweet I'll eat like dark chocolate that's just been my life anyway, just doing a whole 360 on the things that I'm consuming. So right now I'm literally just giving myself like the right amount of protein, the right amount of fat, and just limiting the carbohydrates and the sodium, watching 
what I'm consuming, y'all. I really do think it's gonna make a big difference because you're just like, you're giving your body, you're fueling your body up and you're detoxing, right? So I've been really trying to juice. And like I said, just consume the right amount of nutritional values to just keep me going and give me way more energy. And I do feel lighter. I feel more energetic, which is the next thing that I wanted to chat about. When you have surgery, you are not going to be able to do anything athletic. You're not gonna be able to like run around or do some extra activities. You're literally just going to be like, you gotta take it easy. So everyone's process is gonna be different, but mine took a really long time for me to heal. That's probably just simply because I didn't take these measures and these steps before. Before, and now I'm taking it super serious so I'll have to let you know how things work out and if it makes a huge difference but I do believe that because I'm way more athletic now I'm eating super clean I do feel like I'll probably be like back at it but still you're not gonna be able to train I wasn't able to train for maybe to like the first whole year then I felt comfortable enough to like lift certain things I'm not saying you're gonna be bedridden but you really want to take the upper body exercise super careful and of course Speak with your medical professionals. Don't just listen to me. Speak to the people that you are working with so that they can give you guidance on when you can go back and just be honest and transparent on what you're partaking in. My recovery was also different because I had implants and this time I'm not getting implants. I'm going back to natural. I'm really excited about it because I've always been a little limited on the exercises that I'm doing because I have breast implants. So I feel like I'm not able to be like my full beast self, you know? But yeah, this time around, is gonna be different so I don't know what recovery or even the pain is gonna be like cuz I'm not going to have implants anymore and just the thought of that you guys freaks me out because I just can't believe that I'm getting them removed and I'm nervous that they're gonna be like just deflated and like nothing there you know I'm a little stressed out but I trust the process and I just trust in God and I know that whatever decision I decide to do is based on my health there's just really no guarantee that the implant will reject again that it will or won't and I don't want to keep going under the knife I don't want to keep spending this money and I feel like this is just a sign for me to go back to natural you know and I'm gonna do it because I think it's truly the right decision to make and I'm super excited that I get to just share this experience with you guys and maybe my experience will help you in making your decisions and helping you determine what is best for you but also you know speak with your medical professionals and with the team that you're working with I do feel that it's important to find some people that are going to be super supportive with you throughout this journey and just get a lot of advice and seek a lot of support and that leads me to my last topic which is mental health y'all you're taking care of your mental your physical and your emotional i think it's super super important to have the right support system make sure that you're taking people with you that are going to be supportive that are going to help you heal the really cool thing is that i'm going with my mom and dad we've never ever gone on vacation together and i do see this as a vacation because for the first time in our lives we're going on a trip and we're going somewhere so beautiful and I got us a lovely Airbnb that we they get to just enjoy themselves and I do too for the first few days until after surgery then I'll probably be like you know dead on the bed somewhere but not literally but I'm excited because we get to experience like something new that we've never ever got to do before so my heart is filled because I think it's gonna be an amazing trip um, even though we have a lot of differences and it's not something that's really usual for us but we're gonna make it the best and my my parents my mom is gonna be like whipping it up over there I'm making sure I'm taking our juicer I'm making sure I'm taking like all of my things like we're gonna go food shopping we have an amazing kitchen so I recommend if you can stay stay for as long as you possibly can you don't really want to travel and be away from the surgeon I left really fast the first time and I don't think it was the right thing on my body I don't think it was the right thing just for me at all I just love also I love Miami I love the warm weather I love being next to the beach or by the pool just healing and giving your body a straight like relaxation you know I think that's like the most important thing but aside from that I think the mental side of it is just reducing your levels of stress making sure that your body and your mental state are good whether you journal you're meditating or you're praying whatever it is that you do spiritually feed your soul feed your spirit because this is gonna be a big thing for you and I do believe that that makes a huge difference 
um, I know that life happens and sometimes it's just the inevitable. You can't avoid certain things, but try to reduce your stress and just try not to be irritable or frustrated or create yourself more anxiety because I do think that that puts our body in our, in our organs and just things don't really work to the best of their ability. I would definitely say find the right people to go with you so that you feel super supportive, you feel safe, and you feel comfortable that you're going to be taken care of during this time. And then definitely make sure that you're giving your body like a relaxation time period, being in a safe space, um, just feeling just completely letting go and then mentally preparing for the surgery and just living in the moment. Just taking on this journey with the right people is super, super important. <laughs> Well, you guys, that is some of the things that I'm doing to prep for my implant removal. I've completely decided to take this stage really serious. I'm ready to uh, just take this on and see what is to come afterwards. I'm super grateful for you guys joining me on this journey on my road back to natural. It's like really surreal. As you know, it's been since like 2016 since I got my first surgery and I had my implants put in. And now this is just a new chapter. And I am just so grateful that I get to document this time around, just share this with you guys. And I just feel like I wish I would have had the footage of the first time, but it's okay because I am gonna take every little piece of footage that I possibly could take during this journey. Not only to just share with you guys, but just to really take this all in because thinking back to that experience, and I do have little memories from like Snapchat and I was watching the videos the other day. And first of all, I cannot believe the way my breasts looked from the beginning. I don't regret my surgery. I really wanted a lift. I wanted to reshape my boobs. I was really insecure about them. We're human. I'm not putting it out here to change your body, but I'm just sharing my personal experience. It is still scary because I'm going back to natural and I've always envisioned myself with like these beautiful perky boobs and perfectly rounded shape. And now I don't know what they'll look like anymore, but just because of how I've been feeling and the experiences that I've had while having this in, these implants put in. I just don't think that this is me anymore. And I'm ready to get them removed. I'm ready for what this will be like. And I'm grateful, you know, I'm grateful that I've got to have this experience. I've always watched like YouTube videos of people share their experiences. And I've even watched like implant removal videos before I got my surgery, but I was like, I, I don't care, I want it. And I'm gonna do just whatever I want. And now, you know, years later, here I am making that same video of an implant removal. So life has a very interesting way. You know, they say you make plans, but God has plans for you, right? Um, so I trust the process. I trust that everything will be absolutely amazing and according to God's will. So I can't wait to share more with you guys. Keep a lookout because the next few videos are going to be about me packing, what I've ordered. I'm going to be showing you guys and packing with you. Um, I do need a little bit of a moment because I am moving and it's been very overwhelming to film and also move and do this whole transition. But I can't wait for this like series because the next is just like, I can't wait to show you guys what I'm packing for this surgery i'm gonna show you guys a ton of things that i'm bringing to recover all of the bras that i've purchased the nightgowns like everything that i'm gonna need for this surgery i'm gonna show you guys because there were a lot of things that i took a lot of things that i didn't take the last time so i kind of have a really good feeling of what i'm bringing this time around so i'm excited to share that with you guys so i'm really excited so stay tuned for this implant removal journey and my journey back to natural but thank you guys so much for watching that is all for today's video i hope you enjoyed spending time with me today these are the things that i'm doing to prep for my surgery thank you guys always for your support and i will see you in the next vlog